What's up, guys? What's going on, man? I'm Paul. This is Pauline Theology's Daily Devotional with Trust in Jesus Ministries. We're in Genesis chapter 45, 9 through 15, and we are on the Joseph saga. It's been such a good story. We got to the pinnacle last time where Joseph reveals himself. I'm your brother, man. I'm your brother, Joseph, the one you sold to slavery, man. He's like, dude, it's me. I'm here. And then what was so awesome about it is the forgiveness that he has and the recognition of the plan that God had sovereignly over him. So now we're going to see the fallout. What continues to happen after the reveal? What does Joseph want to do and what do the brothers do? If you haven't checked it out yet, 45, 9 through 15 in Genesis, go ahead, stop the tape, read it, see what it has to say. If you've already read it, man, let's go ahead and jump into it. The first question is, what is it saying? What is actually going on in the story, in the narrative? Um, well, Joseph's like, go, go, man, go back, get my father, dude. Go and get my father, man. I got to see my dad, man. And he says, and tell him that your son is alive, man. Tell him that God has set him as uh, as a Lord over all of the land of Egypt, man. So hurry up. Come on down. Don't wait. Don't stop. It's great because he starts out by saying, not uh, I am, but God has placed me. God has set me. He, uh, uh, forward, th- God forward thinking. God thinking first not himself. It's not about his position, but it's about the position that was given to him by the sovereign Lord, by God himself. And then he says, man, come dwell in the land of Goshen, man. He says, come down, be with me and I'll take care of you. It says, because there's many years of famine that's left, five years of famine. And he says, I'm going to take care of you lest if you were in your own place, be perished or go destitute or be poor or die it says uh, the word is be dispossessed in in the hebrew so it's like uh whether you die or you get uh, moved out of your land become poor and destitute he's like come down so i can make sure that none of that happens so i can make sure that you are taken care of man he says you can live with me or he says you can live near me bring all of your things man your whole house your kids your, your grandkids and your grandkids kids man he's like just bring them all man Come on down, man. And then he tells his brothers, he says again, he says, tell him of the greatness that uh, I have become here in in the land of Egypt, man. Tell him of the greatness. And then after that happens, it says that he fell upon the neck of his brother Benjamin and cried. And Benjamin cried, too. And they were just overjoyed by the reunion they had. And then it says that he kissed his other brothers and cried over them as well. It says and then finally his brothers began to speak. And this, this speaking probably a little bit of time, you know, earlier it said that uh, when he said, uh, is my father still alive? They didn't say much because they were like terrified. They were worried, scared, overwhelmed because the brother whom they sold to slavery, that great deed, the one in which they never want to speak about or talk about or believe that God has been punishing them for uh, through this whole duration. They're worried about him. And we'll see later that that's kind of what the, they whisper uh, later on when their father dies, that uh, will Joseph uh, uh, will Joseph come after us now that the father is gone. But that's not the way of Joseph, because the way of Joseph is the way of Yahweh and, and forgiveness is, is what he's doing. And so that that's what that little bitty tidbit at the end seems to be where Benjamin, his full brother, just cries and weeps because his brother is back. He probably was only a kid whenever um this uh, this terrible tragedy in the family that caused his his father to be so uh, 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 full of sadness was uh, occurred. And so now that he sees his brother again, he's overjoyed. So what does this say about God, man? Well, it says that God orders the steps of man. God is sovereign, basically, is what that means, the attribute that, that God is controlling all things because the way that Joseph made it to the pinnacle of the position that he is was only there because God placed him there. It was only there because God set him there. There's a, a ver, there's a psalm, I believe, in or a, a verse in Hebrew. And sorry, there is a verse in Proverbs that says that man, uh, uh, it says that uh, uh, man takes his steps, but God directs them. And so it's it's the direction of God. The placing of God, the ordering of the steps of God, his sovereignty is what uh, we should be seeing an attribute that we can find here.
what's this say about man is that, uh, man, we should recognize that God orders our steps. Joseph saw it. That's why he said that it wasn't you who did this thing. You purposed it for evil, but God purposed it for good, for the salvation of you and your family and the, the world, uh, for the preservation of life. And so I think it's incumbent upon us to recognize in all things and be a, 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 a God first, um, God forward thinking in all that we do and, and what we see and how we handle the situations that we're placed in, whatever situation that is, uh, is to recognize God in it. And then give grace. Man, Joseph is just so gracious to his brothers. There's much that he could have done because he has all the power. All the power. Save for, for Pharaoh. And what does he use his power for? To bless his brothers. And we must be gracious as God is gracious. How do we apply these truths to our lives, man? Well, first off, I think it's important for us to do what Paul says in Romans. Do not return evil for evil, but evil for good. That's kind of the thing we see here. Obviously, the, I should have started out actually with the sovereignty of God, recognizing his sovereignty and walking in it. But I think it's uh, right now, it seems like a lot of things are going on that we don't have control over and that uh, seem to be a dismay for us. And it's others against us. And so I think that what we should recognize is that when these people do these things towards us, when we see the affliction that's going on around us, that we would um, repay that with good. Turn the other cheek. Give repentance or give a grace. And, and but finally, the second thing and probably the most important, like I said, is recognizing God's sovereignty. Man, how can we apply these truths to our lives is uh, today in whatever situation you're in, whatever place you're at. Know that God is in control. Know that God is in control. Yeah, I, I uh, appreciate you guys for listening, man, and I will see you in the next episode.